during that period of time, everything was segregated in Texas. The UIL had their own organization. The UIL was for the whites who were in segregation. Prairie View was the hub of the black community as far as sports and academics. Like educators at Prairie View University, said, okay, well, we want to have something similar to that for the black schools in Texas. The PVIL stands for Prairie View Interscholastic League, separate but not equal, because we didn't get all of the amenities, such as stadiums, locker rooms, and things of that nature. Everyone growing up kind of had this moment when they realized they were living in a divided world. When was that moment for you? The moment came up every week. We played at a place called Woodson Field. And I don't ever remember going into that locker room. At halftime, we were in the end zone, regardless of what the weather was. All of our games, our football games, were played on uh, Wednesdays and Thursday nights. White schools played their games on Friday and Saturday nights. The first time that I heard about Friday night lights, I had no idea what that meant because that was not my experience. I grew up when they had the colored and the white water fountain. It was something that you thought about, but you could not allow it to stop you from living. Practicing and playing on poor conditions, it wasn't uncommon to have your football cleats pushing it through the bottom of the soles to your foot. Playing with blisters was just an ordinary day. At the time, that felt natural, but it wasn't. Looking back, it wasn't. Back then, it was really about community. You had all these pockets where you had these black schools and just tremendous support from the black communities. A lot of it revolved around football and basketball and whatever the sport might be. Black high schools and historically black colleges, it's a real party-like atmosphere. The bands do kind of carry, carry the day. A lot of times all I can think about it is, I went to a, a black, uh, black high school football concert and a game broke out. Yeah. <laughs> watching the bands compete and the drum majors and the majorettes and watching those people perform. You'll have people say, well, we might have lost the game, but we won halftime. This was not a game. This was an event. There was always this festive atmosphere at the PVIO games, and, and that was the big difference. In 1965, a meeting between the directors of the PVIL and UIL began the road to integration. And in 1967, a merger between the leagues was underway. But as is often the case, progress was met with resistance. The community pushback and the acceptance of integration delayed everything. Prior to integration, it was always said that, oh, you people can't compete. You are inferior, you don't have the wherewithal, you haven't had the training and the coaching, et cetera, et cetera. And when we do integrate, you're going to find that uh, you people are not going to really be able to compete on an equal basis. Just the opposite of that was true. Black schools tended to dominate the athletic contest. Several programs previously had not been winning. All of a sudden, you get this infusion of these incredible black athletes and they turned those programs around. We were at a clinic, and one of the coaches came up to me and he said, uh, uh, Coach Brown, uh, how do you coach a black kid? And I told him, you coach him just like you would coach your son. You nurture him, you give him hard and tough love, treat him just like he's part of your family, and everything will be okay. And he wound up winning the state championship. <laughs> the PVIL would cease operations at the end of the 1969 to 1970 school year. Its legacy forever enshrined with those whose lives it touched and the force for change it provided. What do you want people to take away from that? 
and, and this story. The PVIL merging with the UIL made for a better experience for everybody. If you were raised a certain way and we all were raised different or separate or whatever, we never understand the next person's life. But if we're ever thrown in a foxhole with them, if we're ever thrown on a court with them, if we're ever thrown into war with them, we understand we're, we're just alike. When people come together with a commonality and a shared goal, that's unity. It can be the best for both of us, for all of us.